Hello, my friends, and welcome back. <sighs> Today, we're going to be taking a look at some clips from Sparkle Jams. She's the creator that I made a video about a while back that was titled Fat People Are Cooler. She's like super artistic and she talks like this and all this type of stuff. Like, I feel like we're voguing or whatever um, every time that she speaks. It's honestly amazing. As you can see, I've got a little bit of flower action going on in the background. And my hair grows increasingly disheveled with each passing day. In order to prepare my mind for this art, I must first apply comb to mustache. She's going to be responding to the comment that says, being the size of a while is not normal. I think they were going for something else there, perhaps some sort of aquatic animal. Only in America, the country that profits off healthcare, has it been vaguely normalized. Look at yourself. That little look at yourself thing at the end was not very nice, but all right, let's see her response. Fat people can be found in every culture and every country around the world. There have always been fat people and there will always be fat people. Has the prevalence of obesity increased at all? Um, back in the day, if you were obese, it meant that you had access to way more food than everybody else. The average person was not. And that's actually why back in the day, being chubbier or a little bigger or whatever you want to call it, uh, was seen as desirable because it meant that you had food. You have access to food? Oh man, like <laughs> back in the day, food wasn't just free flowing like it is today and it wasn't made of a bunch of processed chemicals that make it really easy to put on weight. While we suffer the most within the punishing privatized US healthcare system due You suffer the most from the privatized healthcare system. Oh, so you want it to not be privatized. You want socialized medicine. I don't think that everybody should pay for me to go to the doctor. I know a lot of people are going to argue about that. Everybody has a right to go to the doctor. Yeah, sure. Um, but I don't need to pay for it. Especially if people who are purposely neglecting their health are milking the hell out of that system. I'm not paying for that. You can pay for it yourself. To medical fat phobia, weight stigma, and yes, lack of access. It did not create us and that's an incredibly flawed and reductionist point of view it didn't create you right you created you where you are today is because of the steps that you took only you can change this so why don't you look at yourself you know profile picture having locked account ass bit okay wow she got a little dark there <laughs> wow you got a little a uh, little angry a little bitter there towards the end huh Wow, uh, you got a little mad there at the end, huh? Wow, geez, your true feelings came to the forefront. No profile having, locked ass account, mf -er. Hey guys, I'm gonna bash myself in the leg with a hammer and then ask you to pay for my doctor visit. How about that? Next. So here's the thing. Fat people are not the supporting cast in the little movie that is your life. So here's the thing. Yes, they are. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't need any supporting roles in my life. I'm annoying enough all on my own. I don't need a, any sort of assistance. We're not your mommy. <laughs> I'm not your daddy. Unless you want me to be. Oh, sorry. Sorry, it was getting weird there. We're not your therapist either. Why did you start that off by caressing your ear? Hold on. We're not. Yeah, you see that little ear caress? This person's way of speaking is so bizarre. Like, I'm not here to amuse you. Chaka chaka chaka. Whatever, like weird hand movements and stuff. You're like, you're like John Travolta in Pulp Fiction doing that weird little dance like this. Why am I always bringing up Pulp Fiction? <laughs> here, look at my ear. Are you listening when I say that I'm not your therapist, I guess? Your therapist either. We're not your little wingman at the bar you can abandon as soon as you find some day. Okay. Why do you start every statement off with these bizarre hand movements? We're not your stylists. We're not going to go to the mall with you and only visit stores that carry clothes in your size. Alright, well, I mean, these are conversations to have with whatever friend 
um, you're having these conversations with. I don't know why you think that every thin person or whatever views overweight people in this way. It's kind of weird that you think that. And we're happy to have you in our little movies. But if you want to be in them, here's what you're going to do. Okay, whoa, take it easy. Nobody said I wanted to be in your movies. I'm not going to jump through a bunch of hoops just to satisfy your ego. Educate yourself on fat politics and fat liberation. Oh, is that all I have to do to be in your movie? Go through a complete lobotomy? <laughs> Actively ask us about our dumb little crushes and love interests. Why? Why would I care? Why would I care about you? I don't care about anybody else. When you ask us to dinner, choose a restaurant with accessible seating. Provide accessible seating in your own home. You want me to go get extra large sturdy chairs on the off chance that someone that's overweight might come over? I wasn't planning on inviting anybody over. Um, so, no, I'm not... Is, is this couch good enough? Is this accessible enough? I mean, anybody should be able to just plop down on this sucker, right? Not that I'm inviting anybody over. See, this is why I don't have any friends. Advocate for your fat friends whenever you can, and remember, friendship is reciprocal. Asks for me to advocate for overweight people, and then says friendship is reciprocal. Um, yeah, it is. So are you gonna do all that stuff for me, huh? You're gonna like go out on a limb and fight for my stuff and blah blah blah, annoy everybody around you with things related to me. Hey guys, the cynical dude, did you ever consider buying a mustache comb from him? You should. I will sell these mustache comb necklaces soon, and then you can buy your very own. What do you think about that poster? Would you buy that? Is that completely insane that I would sell that <laughs> and allow people to put that in their very own home? That's the most narcissistic thing ever. But actually, I think it's just really hilarious. Um, I'm not a narcissist. I think it's funny. <laughs> Next, took a break from TikTok because the comments were too much. Okay, and you are, there's multiple yous. Um, dude, things are getting crazy artistic up in here, homies. Alright, this one has some wacky music, so I had to mute it. Um, I will read the captions, though. Fat people are not problems to be solved. We are not failed thin people. We're not your sidekick. Okay, why are you looking at me all strangely? And there's like several of you. Did I get hit in the head with a hammer, or are there two of her there? Um, have you ever seen art that was so abstract that it lacked all meaning? I think art can become too abstract, objectively. We're not your mommy. We're not your F word that I cannot say on YouTube. We're not a burden on the systems which have never included us in the first place. Oh, what, like the healthcare system? Uh, what do you mean it never included you in the first place? The healthcare system understands that obesity is unhealthy, so obviously they're not going to advocate for it. That's not them not including you, that's just them doing their job. And why are you telling me you're not a burden on the system? If we had socialized medicine, every overweight person would be a burden on the system that we would all be paying for. We do not accept the social and economic sanctions against us. Me neither. We do not accept the status quo. Why are you speaking on everybody else's behalf? Like you're the spokesperson for every overweight person? I'm sure there's plenty of overweight people that accept the status quo. What are you talking about? Why are you looking at me so weird? Fat people of the world unite. Dude, you're not a religion, okay? You're not a people, all right? You're not all related enough. All right, so we've got ourselves the spokesperson for all overweight people everywhere, regardless of your race, religion, creed, whatever the hell that one means. Um, <laughs> Brown-haired people of the world unite. You will no longer be a doormat to non-brown-haired people. Moving forward from this day, I proclaim it to be true. Go forth, multiply, conquer. Would probably be a good idea, I don't know. When I'm experiencing explicit fatmesia out in the world. Fatmesia? Was that? <laughs> Excuse me? Come again? Oh boy, here we go. Fatmesia, also called fat phobia or sizeism, is prejudice plus power. Dude, power has nothing to do with anything, okay? Stop trying to throw that into your definitions. 
It's not this or that unless there's power involved. Yeah, no, none of that means anything. Anyone of any weight or body type can have exhibit size-based prejudice, but in North America and across the globe, thin people have the institutional power. Therefore, fatmesia is a systematized discrim systematized discrimination or antagonism directed against fat bodies. Wow. This is the biggest load of bollocks that I've ever read. Prejudice plus power? That sounds strikingly similar to some other isms where people claim certain people can't exhibit it. I like to visualize the energy being literally transformed by the power of my liberation. The energy being literally transformed by the power of your liberation. Are you sure this is liberating? You just seem angry. And whose energy are you transforming with your quote, liberation. I like to visualize myself inside of the anti-sea bear circle. The vibration of that person needing to be performatively cruel to heal something in them. Right, I understand and I agree that some people are cruel because there's something wrong inside of them. Absolutely. Um, I don't know why you sniffed your armpit before you told me that. Performatively. Right here, are we doing a little, uh, you checking to make sure that you got your laundry done? You like smelling the jacket? Like, oh shit! <laughs> I didn't need to do laundry. Be cruel to heal something in them. To feel affirmed that. To feel affirmed that maybe they are valuable after all, because at least they're worth more than me and my. Maybe they are valuable after all, because at least they're worth more than me and my fat body. In my mind, that vibration is strong but unwieldy. Okay. Well, I mean, while we're on the topic of visualizing energy and all this stuff, uh, maybe you should just, like, meditate. Maybe you should put these visualization skills to work to benefit you in your life by going within and confronting your inner demons and all this type of happy stuff. It has the power of sickness. The power of sickness, okay. It radiates in waves like heat off of asphalt on a hot day. What does? <laughs> the power of your liberation vibes? What? So if we combine fat acceptance with some DMT, um, this is <laughs> this is the path we go down, my friends. It's a slippery slope, man. She went on some ayahuasca journey and she's just never being the same. As it reaches up to touch me, it is zapped into a new, blinding, sparkling, moving energy. What? What is? The vibes or whatever? Damn. Damn. I must not be meditating right, homie. I don't I don't feel and see all these vibrational waves poking out of my forehead and interacting with the freaking molecules around me. It vibrates out of my feet and my fingertips as power, compassion, and self-knowledge. Yo, this is like some Goku stuff, isn't it? I don't actually watch anime, so that's probably a really stupid reference <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> She's going Super Saiyan, bro. I am grounded in the knowledge of my inherent worth. I am grounded in the knowledge of my inherent worth. What? That sounds really artistic and everything, but that doesn't really mean anything. You just said a bunch of nothing. And everyone I look upon feels the power of my presence. Um... Well, yeah, when you start doing all these weird hand movements and staring directly into my soul all intensely and stuff, yeah, I could, I could definitely feel the power of your presence. It's a little overwhelming. As I speak into the microphone, I can feel the vibrations from my vocal cords emanating and being picked up in a digital fashion by this microphone. The energy radiates out in 360 degrees and envelops you in a blanket of soothing white light. For some reason. <laughs> oh man, this is all so artistic. I feel like such an unsophisticated fool. Do I just not get art? Or is this just really a little weird? Um, hmm. Am I just an unsophisticated fool who does not understand art? Surely it cannot be. <laughs> I get art, I swear to God. Anywho, um, yeah, man, that's, um, there was a lot of interesting words and hand movements, um, and it was very colorful, this, all these videos, so, um, 10 out of 10. This person is always very interesting to listen to. I have a hard time actually picking up what they're saying because they present it in such a weird way. 
they're like, you, you go to say hello to her. Like, hey, how's it going there, chick? And she's like, oh, I'm good. How are you? And it's like, dude, you're acting like David Blaine again. How did you know I was thinking of the Seven of Clubs? She's all like, is this the card that you were thinking of? And you're like, no. And then she's like, check your back pocket. And you're like, what? No. No, son. No. What? No. No, dude, no. Like, this is a serious waste of your talent. You should be out doing street magic. <laughs> Oh man, oh man, that would be so amazing, dude. I swear to God, that would be so good. Go do some street magic and film it, and you are gonna make a fortune. You are a great performer. This is amazing. Oh, but I do disagree about all the socialized healthcare and all that crap. You know, I just have to throw that in there. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.